So today, of course, we're here to talk about understanding your student loans. So, so we can get started. So a little bit about today's agenda. So today's plan, we're basically going to go over a little bit of an overview of what student loans and grants are, which will take about half hour, and then we'll have a walk through the application, which is about 20 minutes. So over here, we'll basically go through like the most commonly asked questions in the application, and I'll also have uh, screenshots for you guys to even follow along uh, as well. And then uh, we will have some lab time at the end. Uh, again, you guys can use that Q&A box. When you guys post a question in there, the moderator will basically approve it and it will show up in that chat there. So uh, we will have time even at the end uh, just to kind of work with you guys and try and get your guys' applications submitted. So before we start real quick, we're just going to do a um, Treaty 6 Territory Land Acknowledgement. So we acknowledge that the land on which we gather today is the traditional gathering place for many Indigenous people. Uh, we honour and respect the history, languages, ceremonies and the culture of the First Nation, Métis and Inuit who call this territory home. So, so often student loans are a good and reliable source of funding, but they're often just one piece of the puzzle, right? So you guys may want or need to access these different sources of funding to help cover your guys' um, education costs throughout the year, right? So you're looking at things like your McEwen awards, scholarships and bursaries. Uh, you have the student lines of credits, which usually offer lower interest rates. Uh, you have your work and your savings amounts, of course, um, government scholarships, student loan funding and then uh, you have your First Nation or Métis Nation funding as well. So why should you guys take out a student loan? So we recommend a student loan as opposed to a line of credit for several reasons. So number one is that you don't get any grant funding from the banks. Uh, number two is you don't really get any repayment help from the banks either. And then also when you guys do withdraw from a line of credit, it does start earning interest immediately. So that's another reason why we say that you guys should go for a student loan first. So with student loan funding, um, it's available to both full-time and part-time students. Uh, you get considered for grants at the same time. So the one application that you guys do will consider you guys for federal and provincial grant funding as well. Uh, there's 0% interest until six months after school ends. And then there's no payments required while you guys are in study. And then when it does come time for you guys' repayment, there is repayment supports available. And then I'll also show you guys the portal that you guys will access later in the presentation um, to basically apply to the RAP program there. So are you a full-time or a part-time student? So full-time study at McEwen is nine credits or more per term. Uh, some students with permanent disabilities are considered full-time with six credits. So for this, what you'll wanna do is you would have to check with our access and disability resource advisors. Um, if you go to mcewen.ca, just type in ADR in the search box. It should be the very first link, and I believe that they even have a, uh, a contact us page on there as well that you can click on. So if you do feel that you have a permanent disability, um, again, just reach out to one of the advisors and discuss it with them there. Uh, students who are part time can apply for part time funding with a different application. So it would again just be right on the Student Aid Alberta website uh, under the applications and forms. So uh, keep in mind that if you are a part time student, it is a different application. And then if you are a full time one, um, it's all going to be done entirely online. Um, and then one thing to note as well, uh, spring summer does have different rules. We won't get too much into spring summer here, but um, essentially you can apply in the new year after you, you guys are registered into your courses. Uh, so what we recommend is registering into your courses first, and then you can reach out to us. Um, I'll have our contact information here later in the presentation, but essentially register into your courses first and then reach out to us to see whether or not uh, if you're a full-time student or a part-time student because 
it will be a different application that I have to submit. And also with spring summer, the full time versus part time works a lot differently than the fall and winter. So that's why we generally want students to get registered into their courses first and then reach out to us. But essentially for spring summer, you wouldn't even be able to apply for that, I believe until February. So we guys have some time to kind of register into your courses first and then reach out to us. So what we're going to go into now is we'll talk a little bit about the student funding process. So number one would be applying for Alberta student aid. So since your income tax information may change each year, um, each year you will be submitting a different funding application. So you can't essentially you can't submit um, your student loan application today for your whole degree. It'd have to be for just one year. So each year that you're coming back, you will have to submit a new application again because your um, income tax information may change. So um, with the Alberta student aid application, the one application that you guys do, you'll get considered for three things. So you get considered for Alberta student loans, Canada student loans, and then any federal and provincial grant funding as well. And you guys would apply using the Alberta student aid portal. Um, it can take up to four weeks to process an application. However, uh, during our peak time, sometimes it can take uh, a little longer than four weeks. And then also with the request for review and other appeals, it can take up to six weeks to process. So those are just some timelines to keep in mind as well. So essentially, after you apply for Alberta Student Aid, the next step would be for Alberta Student Aid to do their assessment. So once you apply again, you get considered for both loans, which are the portion that you have to repay, and then grants um, as well, which is uh, the portion that you don't have to repay, provided that uh, you guys maintain eligibility. So the Student Aid Application Assessment. Um, Parental income and spousal income are not considered as a resource for an Alberta student loan. Uh, dependent students, those who are usually under the age of 23, can choose not to include family income and still be considered for loan funding. Now, if you are a dependent student, guys, please keep in mind that dependent students who choose to not include family income will not be considered for any grant funding, even if you choose to include that information at a later date. So again, if you are a dependent student and later in the presentation, I'll have a breakdown of exactly what's an independent student versus a dependent student. But essentially, if you are a dependent student and you don't want to provide your parents income, you can still be considered for student loan funding. However, you will not get any grants. So that's just something to keep in mind there as well. So basically what Alberta Student Aid does is they will do a cost minus resources to see exactly what your need is. So some of the costs that we're looking at with Alberta Student Aid. So you have costs which are things like your tuition, your books, your fees, uh, living costs, and then uh, daycare costs as well. So with the cost here, they use a standardized living allowance um, so they'll only cover you guys' basic costs. So what this means is they're not going to be looking to cover things like um, like your car payments or your visa bill payments. They'll look to cover your basic living costs there. Uh, so again, they use a standardized living allowance, which can also be found on the Alberta Student Aid website. So for resources, you're going to be looking at things like uh, any RESPs towards your education, uh, family contributions, scholarships, band funding, and then income for the severely handicapped, which is your uh, your age funding. So with the resources, this is a surprisingly small list. So over here, guys, you'll notice throughout the whole application, they don't ask for your savings or your work amounts or anything like that, or even your retirement savings, because uh, students uh, well, Alberta Student Aid basically know that students are going to have to work and access their savings in order to get them through the school year. So they're not going to be penalizing you guys for that. So what you'll notice is when we do get to the uh, application walkthrough, there's not going to be any sections where they're asking for your savings or how much you make at work or anything like that. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So what we'll get into now is your loan limit. So once Alberta Student Aid does their overall cost minus resources math, uh, they'll try to fund as much of your need as possible within these loan limits that we see here. 
so again, guys, these are just the loan limits and you can get grant funding uh, above this as well. So for one semester, the total loan limit that they can approve you for is $8,500. Uh, for two semesters, it's $17,000 of loans, and then three semesters is $25,500. So um, $17,000 might seem like a lot, but for example, if you do five years at $17,000, you will end up hitting that amount uh, just below, which is the $85,000, which is a lifetime loan limit for any undergraduate degree, diploma, or certificate program. So please keep that in mind as well. Um, Alberta Student Aid does fund you for your years of program plus one additional year. So what that means is if you guys are, for example, in a degree program, they'll give you four years of funding plus one additional year. So again, when, if you guys are getting that 17,000 for the five years, you would end up getting to that 85,000 cap pretty quick. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And then with your open study students, um, students in open studies can only receive a lifetime maximum of 12 months of funding. So what this means is if you, for example, went to another institution or another school and did uh, four months of open studies there and then came back to McEwen to complete some more open studies, you'd only have eight months of funding left there. So that's something to keep in mind for anyone here who's going to be going into open studies, that you have a lifetime limit of 12 months of funding. So now what we'll move on to is we'll talk a little bit about you guys' grant funding, right? So there are many grants that both the federal and provincial government will consider you guys for. So what I have up here, this is only a partial list, but uh, I do know that um, you can find all the different kind of grants and all their details and everything like that, uh, the eligibility, all on the Alberta Student Aid website. Um, I do know that there are some grants that have also been doubled in value during COVID and it will likely remain doubled in value for the 2022-2023 academic year. Uh, so up here, um, grant funding is available for students based on special eligibility. So again, this is just a partial list. So you can have your income-based grants, uh, you have grants for students with dependent children, and then you have the services and equipment grants for students with disabilities as well. Uh, students are assessed for grants through the Alberta Student Aid application. So again, guys, that one application that you guys do, you automatically get considered for Alberta Student Loan, Canada Student Loan, and then federal and provincial grant funding as well. Uh, grants are non-repayable, but are usually not enough to cover all of your expenses. So <clears throat> touching again on this dependent versus independent, this is going to be important for you guys as well. So um, again, in the next slide after, I'll have a breakdown of independent versus dependent, but generally speaking, dependent students are generally students who have been out of high school for less than four years. You guys must include your parental income on the application to be considered for grants. And again, with the dependent students, if you choose not to include your parental income, you can still get student loan funding, but you just won't get any grants attached to your application. Now with the independent student, again, uh, those who are married, have, been a, uh, have a dependent child, have been out of high school for at least four years, or if you're 23 years of age or older, um, you do not need to include parental income when being assessed for grant eligibility. So here I'll have a little breakdown. So do you need to include your parents' income? So if any one of these things um, on the left hand side here are true, so if you're 23 years of age or older, if you're a parent of a dependent child, if you've been married, separated, divorced or common law, if you've been out of high school for four years, or if you've been available to work full time for two years, if any one of those things apply to you, you are going to be an independent student and you don't need to include your parental income on the application to be considered for grants. Now, if none of these things apply to you, then you are going to be considered a dependent student and you will need to include your parental income on the application in order to be considered for grants. And again, if you choose not to include your parental income as a dependent student, you can still get student loan funding, but you just won't get any grants. 
Now there is also something called uh, special independent status. So what this means is this is basically if there's a full relationship breakdown within your household where there is a um, uh, there's a social worker, a caseworker, um, basically a therapist, anyone that can verify and document that. But essentially, if that doesn't apply to you, then um, you're going to be considered a dependent student and you will need to provide your parental income to be considered for grants. So what this brings us to would be the end of the student aid application assessment. So the next step would be your confirmation of registration, which is done by McEwen. So basically what we'll be looking for to see is that your funding application matches the program that you're registered into. And we're going to be also looking to see that you guys are registered full time so we can confirm you guys. So <clears throat> when applying online for full time student aid funding for fall and winter, you need to be registered full time, which is at least nine credits in each term. Uh, now remember that while winter fees aren't due now, um, you will still have time to change your classes, but you'll still need to be registered full time. Uh, also over here, it is very important to maintain full time registration. So again, nine credits per term for your study period indicated on your funding application. Uh, if you do drop below nine credits, it may impact your funding. So what can happen is some of your grants may get converted to a loan that you will need to repay once your repayment period begins. So essentially, if you guys today went in and submitted an application for September till April, what Alberta Student Aid is looking for is to see that you guys maintain full time registration from September till April. So if you do end up dropping to part time status, so under nine credits or if you end up withdrawing from school. Uh, again, your grants may get converted to loans, which you will have to repay when your repayment period begins. So that's something that you guys should also keep in mind there as well. And then also with the confirmation of registration, um, any classes that you guys are on a wait list for does not count towards your enrollment. So once you do get into those classes, what happens is um, of course, your course load changes, so then your fees are going to change and a lot of your costs will change as well. So what our system does is it will continue to review your application nightly until you're registered full time. Um, the university will also attempt to request tuition and fees from your student loan funding to come directly to McEwen to pay for your tuition and fees. So what happens is basically Alberta Student Aid will give us one shot to request tuition and fees. And if students end up changing their classes around or getting into some of their waitlist courses after we've already confirmed, Alberta Student Aid doesn't allow us to go back and change the amount that we requested. So you guys want to see later in the presentation, the really important step here would be to watch your inboxes and also watch your My Student Center just to make sure that you guys don't miss anything. Because again, we only get that one shot to request you guys' tuition and fees. And if students end up changing their classes around or getting into some waitlist courses, adding dropping courses, it does change the amount that's outstanding. So we wouldn't have a chance to uh, to change that around. So usually what happens there is you do have a certain funding amount that goes into your account and you would have to use that to basically pay the difference. It's basically the extra tuition money would be going to your account. But again, we'll touch on that later in the presentation as well. So uh, after the confirmation of registration, like I mentioned, the main thing is to watch your guys' inboxes. So uh, Alberta Student Aid will not um, send you guys too many emails. The only time they'll really reach out to you is if there's something wrong with your loan application or uh, something wrong with your account or if your enrollment status changes. So main thing here is uh, the first time you guys apply for funding, you will receive loan agreements that you will need to complete online. Uh, you will not receive any money until these online documents are completed. So usually what happens is when you guys submit your loan applications today, most students get approved for both federal and provincial grant funding. So or just funding in general. So what this means that there's going to be more than one portal that you have to access, uh, more than one website, and then more than one inbox. So it's really important. Again, I'll show you guys all the portals later in the presentation, but it's really important that you guys keep an eye on the inboxes for each of these portals, right? 
Uh, you will receive information in the Alberta Student Aid Portal on how to complete these online forms. Uh, well, how to complete these forms online. Um, they do also send you guys an email to your personal account, but um, for some reason it does end up in your junk folder sometimes. So please do keep in mind that once you do receive uh, uh, some emails to also just uh, check your guys' junk folder as well. And the main thing here again is don't ignore any mail in your Alberta Student Aid and your McEwen University inbox because we will communicate to you guys a lot through there. So for example, when we do confirm your guys' tuition and fees, what we do is we'll send you guys an email saying that we have confirmed your student loan and we are requesting X amount of dollars to come to McEwen to pay for your tuition and fees. So at that point, just make sure that um, you do check in my student center just to make sure that everything is matching up and all the numbers match. Because again, if you do end up getting into some of your waitlist courses or if you end up changing your course load around, um, it will change the amount that's outstanding. And again, Alberta Student Aid gives us one shot to request those tuition and fees. So after watching your inboxes, what happens is once you guys do submit your Alberta Student Aid application and it gets processed by Alberta Student Aid, uh, they will send you guys an award letter, which will be in your Alberta student aid inbox. So what this award letter tells you is it identifies how much funding you're going to receive. It identifies the different types of funding you'll receive. So it'll say how much of it is loans, how much of it is grants, uh, and then also says when the funding will be released as well. Uh, in your McEwen emails, again, like I mentioned, we will send you communication letting you know how much of that funding we requested to come to the university to pay for your tuition and fees. So main thing here, guys, is just to keep an eye on your inboxes after you submit your applications. So that will take us through the funding, uh, the student funding process. So basically the next step is after you've completed your guys' loan agreements, you've reviewed your award letter, the next step would actually be receiving your funding. So um, your funding is released about two to, three af uh, two to three weeks after enrollment is confirmed by McEwen. So if you are applying in the summer, uh, your money will be dispersed late August or early September. Uh, and if you did apply for the full year funding, so if you did apply September right up until April, uh, it will be dispersed in two installments. So you'll get 50% will arrive for September, then the other 50% will arrive for January. And then just make sure that you guys do budget your money accordingly to make sure that you guys can get through the whole school year there. So applying for funding today means that Alberta Student Aid will still hold on to the applications until August. And then what happens is McEwen doesn't go in to confirm your student loans or anything until mid to late August, usually around there. So the reason that we don't confirm your guys' student loan applications until mid to late August is because we still know that students are basically trying to finalize their schedules, get into the waitlisted courses. So we want to give enough time for students to get all of their um, courses in place. Because again, remember that Alberta Student Aid does only give us that one shot to request tuition and fees. So what we generally want to try and do is make sure that everyone's in their correct course loads. And that's why we save it until mid to late August to confirm your student loans. So. Basically what that means is even if you guys are to go in and submit your student loans applications today, uh, Alberta Student Aid will still hold on to those applications until August. And then again, we won't confirm them until mid to late August, just to make sure that you guys can get into your waitlisted courses and, uh, and finalize your schedules basically. So um, all or a portion of your loans and grants funding will typically go directly towards your tuition and mandatory fees each semester. Uh, it will not be applied to residence fees, books or supplies, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, check your My Student System account for the payment. So students usually receive their portion of funds two to three days before the university receives its money. So the student portion of funding is sent to your bank account by that direct deposit information that you guys will provide in the loan agreements. So this is why it's very, very important that you guys complete your loan agreements after you submit your applications because none of the money is going to move around until Alberta Student Aid receives back those loan agreements. 
And also always double check your My Student System just to make sure that your term fees have been paid in full. Um, so basically over here, you can check it enrollment and account summary. Uh, again, you can pull this up with your My Student System. Uh, sometimes you do have instances where students kind of get anxious and end up paying their tuition uh, and we also request tuition. So if there is a double payment of tuition, uh, finance will refund your payment back to the card that you use to uh, to make that payment and we end up usually keeping that student loan payment. Um, also for any of the students getting uh, entrance scholarships, those don't get applied to your account until after add drop uh, deadline in September. And that's usually well after we've already made that request for tuition and fees. So also uh, keep in mind guys that when you do log into your My Student system and you look at the amount that you have outstanding, it does include both your tuition and mandatory fees lumped into one. So what you guys will see also is when you start going through the application walkthrough, um, it does ask for your specific tuition amount, their mandatory fees amount. So keep in mind that when you do go into your My Student system, it kind of just lumps all that stuff together, your tuition and mandatory fees. But we'll touch on that when we get to that section. So, all right. So the next step would be what's the timeline for money arriving? So one to three weeks, your application gets approved. One to two weeks, your master agreements get processed. So those are your loan agreements. Uh, one month before classes start, McEwen requests tuition and fees from uh, from student aid. And then two to three days before classes start, you receive your portion. And then when classes start is when McEwen receives our requested amount. So um, oftentimes approval times are faster than this. Uh, again, in a perfect world, we will request enough to cover your tuition and fees. But again, the main thing here is just to keep an eye on your email, just some, and email and your My Student System, basically just to make sure that you guys don't miss anything. Uh, now also again, just to remind you guys, with that one month before classes start, uh, Alberta Student Aid does allow us to go in and start requesting tuition fees, but again, we like to wait until mid to late August just to make sure that you guys get into your correct course loads and get into your waitlist courses and basically have a more finalized schedule because you do only have that one chance to request tuition and fees. So although Alberta Student Aid does allow us to go in one month before classes start, we usually wait till mid to late August. So this is a student funding life cycle. So while you study, your loans are interest free. Repayment begins after six months of no longer attending school full time. So anytime you are attending school, you will want to let your lending providers know. So you either do this by submitting a new funding application each year, or you can complete paperwork to let um, basically Alberta Student Aid know that you aren't taking out student loans, but you're still registered as a full-time or a part-time student. Um, and again, I'll show you guys the portals right after this slide um, that you guys will be using to submit those requests. So it's also worth noting that um, you should refer to your portals for various information, but I just wanted to really quickly touch on um, the interest rate. So currently um, the floating rate for Alberta loans is prime plus 1%. And then for Canada loans, it's just prime rate. So I think last I seen uh, prime is somewhere around like 3.7%. Uh, it's also worth noting that the government of Canada has suspended uh, accumulation of interest on Canada loans until March 31st of 2023. So now what I'll show you guys real quickly here is the um, the different student funding portals that you guys will access. So often students will wonder um, how do you manage loans and basically check in on your loans. Uh, so again, the Alberta Student Aid Portal is going to be used to basically submit new funding applications each year. Uh, then the other two portals, which is basically the National Student Loan Service Center, so NSLSC account, and then your Alberta Student Aid My Loan account. So what these two portals are, it's basically like um, it's basically like online banking for your portal. So over here, you'll basically be able to check in on all of your Canada loans, and then for the uh, Alberta side, all of your Alberta loans. So you can see basically all the interest accrued, uh, any payments made towards it, the total amount of Canada and Alberta funding you got. It would be all through those two portals there. 
And then also with the uh, the middle one there, the National Student Loan Service Center portal, uh, when it does come time for you guys' repayment, this is also where you would go to apply for that uh, repayment assistance program if you do find that you're having troubles paying back your loan. So I'll touch on each one just a little bit more in detail. So again, uh, student funding portal. Um, this is the studentaid.alberta.ca. Uh, this is where you go to apply for your funding. Again, this is the Alberta Student Aid Portal. So you apply for new loans and grants here. You can review communications about your loan applications, about your disbursements, and then you can see any requests to review for additional funding through this portal here as well. And then the next portal that we have would be your uh, NSLSC portal, so your National Student Loan Service Center portal. This is basically where you go to manage all of your Canada side of things. So you can see your total Canada funding here. You can make payments to Canada loans. You can see your in-study status, uh, in, any interest accrued, payments made towards your Canada loan. And then again, like I mentioned, this is where you guys will come to apply for that repayment assistance program. And then you can also submit an interest free status request through here as well. So basically, if you guys are going to be taking out loans this year, but not needing loans for next year, uh, you'd come to this portal and I believe it should be under managing a loan uh, confirmation of enrollment. And then ba that's basically you guys submitting an interest free request. So I think it just asks for your program, your study start and end dates, and then if you're a full-time or a part-time student. And then when you guys click submit, it comes to a portal that we have here on our side and we can confirm your interest-free status that way. Uh, so then the next portal that we have is basically everything for your Alberta side of things. So again, you can see your total Alberta funding through your My Loan portal. Uh, you can make payments towards your Alberta loans. And again, just like the Canada side, you can see your in-study period, interest accrued, and then any payments made towards your guys' uh, Alberta loan as well. So when you guys first log into your Alberta Student Aid accounts, uh, you will find your inbox, which again, you guys will always be checking. Um, and then also, here is where we find the actual loan application as well. So just make sure that you're selecting the correct one, which is the 22-23 application for September to, to April, basically. Um, and then again, with your spring summer funding, uh, if you do decide to take classes in spring summer, um, that will always be a separate application from your fall and winter funding application. So uh, I think for spring summer, you guys wouldn't be able to apply even until sometime in the new year, probably February. Uh, also, if there is any students going on an exchange program through McEwen International, uh, just reach out to us first before you guys submit your funding application. Uh, again, I'll have our contact information uh, later in the presentation as well here. So uh, you guys will see this part as well in the application. So the application again doesn't ask if you're working or if you will be working, but instead they ask for information from your 2021 tax return. So uh, they'll ask from um, from a 2021 tax return. They'll ask for the total income from the line 15,000. Um, so basically, the next question is asking you to predict what that number will be at the end of 2022. So, for example, um, you guys are going to be in school from September to December, which is the last four months of the year. So basically, if you guys were working the same job, uh, the same hours and had the same pay and everything like that, you could probably expect to make, I'd say anywhere from like 20 to 25 percent less because that because of the fact that you will be in school for that last four months of the year. So what this next section asks is it's not asking you what you think your income will be reduced by, it's asking you what you expect your income to be at the very end of 2022. Um, basically, if you expect your income to be the same or if you expect to make even more than you did in 2021, you can just answer no and leave this box blank. Um, but if you expect your income to be significantly reduced from what you made last year, you would just answer yes in here and then put your best guess as to what you'll make at the end of 2022. 
So for example, here, say for 2021, my income was $50,000. And then say this year, I expect it to be about 30,000. I would answer yes and put $30,000 into the expected reduced yearly income box. Um, okay, so we can move to the next section as well. So also in the application, uh, you will be given options for study dates. Um, so it's generally up to you guys, but what we recommend is usually going from September right up until April. If you expect to be here for both the fall and winter semesters as a full time student, again, nine or more credits per term. Uh, over here, if you guys are thinking about entering your own dates, um, please reach out to one of us, pop it into the Q&A chat because you guys should not have to enter your own dates because basically we built it into the system where depending on the programs that you choose, um, the dates should automatically pop up for you. So you shouldn't have to enter your own dates over here, but if you think that you do, just do reach out to one of us and we can go over it with you there. Then again, spring summer funding is not on here. It will show up sometime, I'd say in February for you guys. So we'll also see the educational cost section as well. So McEwen does go into the system each year and update you guys educational information. So basically what this is, this includes a whole listing of your programs, the majors, and then their costs as well. So what we do is we base these amounts off of a full course load. So essentially, if you're going into a course that has like a relatively preset course list, or if you do plan on attending uh, a full time course load, which is um, five credits per semester or sorry, five uh, courses for a semester, um, what you can do is you can just copy that full course load amount into the blank boxes. Um, so again, we do base this off of a full course load amount. So if you Again, have a relatively preset course list, or if you want to take five courses per semester, just copy the numbers right into the boxes here. And then also do remember, guys, sometimes students do get confused with this page because they're looking at their My Student System as well. But again, like I mentioned earlier, when you're looking on your My Student System, what it does is it kind of lumps the mandatory fees and the tuition amounts all into one. So what the actual application asks for is a breakdown of your actual tuition costs and then a whole breakdown of your actual mandatory fees for the year. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. So you'll also see a cost and available resources section as well. Um, so if you are paying rent or mortgage, then you will select the paying rent or mortgage from the drop down menu. Uh, also, it's important to know here if your parents are paying uh, rent for you, for example, they're helping with like residence fees or paying a certain portion of your um, of your rent as well or your mortgage. Uh, you should still enter yes as uh, paying rent or mortgage. And what you do is under that voluntary contribution from parents, you'd put the amount that they're giving you. So for example, if they're giving you $500 a month to assist you with, uh, with your rent or with schooling, then you just enter it into here. And then do keep in mind guys that if your parents do give you like a lump sum amount, so for example, if you cash out a large chunk of your RESPs for school, or if they give you a lump sum of money towards your schooling, what you'll want to do is make sure that you divide that amount by eight, because again, September to April over here, they're asking for just your monthly amounts, not the yearly, right? So if your parents do give you a lump sum amount of funding to help you for school, just make sure that you guys divide that amount by eight in order to enter the monthly amount in. So again, this is what I was talking about earlier with uh, with one of the questions there. So when you do get to the end of the application, you'll see the amount of assistance requested. So uh, over here, once you submit your application, they'll give you a preliminary amount that you might be eligible for. And again, this amount can always change as well. So also with the total amount of assistance requested box over here, it says that you can leave this field blank and you get assessed for the maximum amount for what you are eligible for. Uh, if you want less than the maximum amount, like it says, enter an amount in here. So what this means is basically if you put $5,000 into that box and you got assessed for $10,000, the maximum that Alberta Student Aid would be able to give you would be up to $5,000 because that's what you entered. So over here, guys, it's also real important to make sure that if you do end up putting an amount into here, 
and then you find uh, that you do need extra money, um, remember that the request for review, like I stated earlier, can take about four to six weeks. And then an additional, I'd say one to two weeks for you to actually receive your money. So if you do find yourself in an emergency situation where you do need the funding right away, it can take up to a, a month to two months for you to receive that funding. So what we generally recommend is leaving this box blank. And if you do find that at the end of the year, you know, you don't need all that funding and you have it sitting in your savings account, again, you can pay it back at any time. There's no strict dates on when you have to make payments. You can just start paying that back at any time. So best thing to do would be to leave this box blank because if you do find yourself in an emergency situation, it can take up to two months to receive additional funding. So then, like we mentioned earlier, to apply for grants only, you just enter $1 into this box. Uh, basically, that $1 value lets the government know that you're interested in grants only and don't need any student loan funding. But again, keep in mind, if you do find yourself in that emergency situation where you do need additional funding, then it can take, I'd, I'd say, up to a month to two months to receive additional funding. So that's something to really important that you guys should touch on as well. Um, so what we also have, which is new for this year, is that Alberta Student Aid is requiring a verified My Alberta Digital ID account uh, for all applicants starting in early September. So if you don't have a verified account, you will not be able to access your funding application. Um, so it's really important. I believe that they're giving you up until September 8th or something like that to get a verified account. And basically all it is is uh, I think that they ask for information from your um, from your driver's license, your personal identification card. Um, if you do have time, even at the end of the session, if you guys do have questions about this, just pop it into the Q&A box and we can kind of try and help you guys get that, uh, get that all verified there as well. It's, it's not too hard. So what we can do now, so I'll leave up our information real quick just for anybody who wants to note it down. And then we'll actually get into the um, application walkthrough together. So I'll so show you guys the website that you'll have to log on to so that we can actually walk through each and every step of the application together. So this is just our contact information. Again, Sana, Brandon, Tim, Ross, Mark, and we also have Marcelo as well. Uh, we are open from 8.30 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. And then studentloans at mccune.ca is our email address. And we also have our phone number, which is 780-497-5025. So what we'll get everybody to do, if you guys are on your laptops right now, um, just log on to studentaid.alberta.ca. And then what you'll do is, uh, I think it's around in the middle of the page under returning users, you'll see a login button. And then you just click on that and basically sign into your Alberta digital ID account. So essentially once you guys sign in, it should look like this. So again, studentaid.alberta.ca and then click on login and then just sign into your guys' My Alberta Digital ID account. So we'll give it just a few more minutes just to let everybody log in here. Oh, I see some people kind of thumbs up. It's fine. Uh, so if you guys are in, I'll walk through it as slowly as I can here just to make sure that it gives some time for people to wa uh, log in. So this is the first section that you guys will get to. So you'll notice that there's three different sections. So you have your personal information, your studies information, and then your financial information as well. Uh, personal information is basically just like your name, your address, your emergency contact information. So with that said, let's skip that section for now, everyone, and then let's go click on start section for the study information. So everybody click on start section for the studies information. And then since this part's a little bit more challenging for students, we'll get this one done with first.
So over here, what you guys are going to want to do is search for McEwen, and we will still come up as Grant McEwen University since that is still our legal name. And then what you'll want to do after you select Grant McEwen University is you're going to want to put in your program name. So if there are any insurance and risk students, just choose the business management diploma. And if there are any open study students, make sure that you guys don't select general studies. So make sure that everybody puts in their correct program here, because again, um, once you guys submit, our system will basically be looking to match up the program names and then again, the full time status as well. So then once you put in your program, make sure that you guys fill in all the other boxes as well. So for the specialization and major, uh, for the specialization and major for diploma students, if you don't have your major selected yet, uh, you can just put the name of your program again. And then for any of the students who are, who are in uh, degree programs, if you don't have a major selected, just choose not declared. OK, and then again, it asks for the year of the program that you'll be in. So basically, once you guys enter in all this information, you'll notice some dates pop up in the application as well. So again, like we mentioned, you guys can choose. Um, it's generally up to you, but we recommend going from September till April if you're going to be a full time student for both the fall and the winter semesters. So after you guys do enter in your, your information here, you should see the dates pop up in the next section. So also when you guys go next, you will see the educational costs for school terms. So as we mentioned previously, uh, you can just enter the full course load amounts into the blank boxes. So just copy those amounts down that you guys see here. And then also if you do even click into the computer costs, uh, the, this isn't the actual cost of a new computer. What this is asking is basically any computer accessory costs. So basically if you have um, uh, like an internet bill, if we need ink for your printer, uh, paper for your printer, all those kind of costs. And then I believe you can claim up to $500 in this box and there's no documentation, no receipts required or anything like that from Alberta Student Aid. So again, you can claim up to $500 and they don't need any kind of uh, documentation for this step at all either. And again, it's for internet bills, uh, ink for your printer, uh, paper, anything like that, computer accessory costs. So once everyone has this entered in, again, just copy the amounts down, enter whatever you guys want up to 500 in the computer cost box. The next section we have is the other study information. So this question here uh, is asking about your program and not your courses. So it says, are you enrolled in a correspondence, e-learning or distance study program? Uh, so if your program is entirely online, they can answer yes. But if you have a mixture of online courses and in-person courses, again, it doesn't ask for your courses. It asks specifically for your program. Uh, and then the next question there, will you complete your program of study and receive your post-secondary certificate? diploma or degree by the end of the study end date uh, indicated on your application. So basically this asks is if you chose September up until April, will you get your degree or diploma by the end of it? So you can answer yes or no there. And then just that last question would be your McEwen student ID number. Right. So once we have all that stuff entered in there, that would usually bring us to the end of the uh, the studies information. And if anyone has any questions, again, just pop it into that Q and A box. If you guys are good to go, just give a quick thumbs up, and then we can move on to financial information as well. Give it a couple of 
couple couple minutes here just to make sure everybody gets caught up. Then we can start the financial information section together as well. Uh, for the computer costs, you can enter up to $500. And again, this is for any kind of cost related to your computer, such as like your internet bill that you pay, uh, or ink for your printer, paper for your printer. You can claim up to $500. And again, they don't require any receipts or documentation for that at all either. So you guys can put whatever amount you want up to 500. I think even if you guys click into the computer cost box, it should tell you um, exactly what you can put in as well. Uh, no, it doesn't count towards a new computer at all. It's just for the computer accessories. Just give it a few more minutes, make sure that everybody gets caught up. And if anyone does have problems with that studies information, again, just pop it into the chat or the um, Q&A. Okay, I don't see too many questions in there. Yes, for the major, if you don't have it declared yet, then you can just put not declared for the degree students. And then for any diploma students, if you don't have a major selected yet, just put the name of your program again for diploma students. OK, so I think that we should be good to move on now, so. What we'll do now is click into the start section for the financial information. So once you guys click into it, you'll see this first step here. So there's a lot going on here, so we'll slow down and kind of walk through it one step at a time together. OK, so the very first one, monthly child support you pay. Uh, this is what you pay through a formal agreement to support children who are not living with you. OK. So again, monthly child support is what you pay through a formal agreement to support children who are not living with you. And then the next question, while attending school, I will. So this is the paying rent, yes or no. Uh, if you pay rent to your parents and they can give you receipts or you can document it, uh, such as like a rental agreement, for example, say yes here because this again will change a standardized living amount that Alberta Student Aid uses. So if you do give money to your parents and they can document or verify that, um, do put yes here. And then with the rest of the amounts, resources while in school, again, guys, this is all monthly, right? So make sure that these are all monthly figures. Uh, so for the first one, um, if you do get a lump sum amount for RESPs towards your schooling, make sure that you're dividing it by eight or whatever you entered on your application to make sure that it is a monthly amount. Again, alimony or child support you receive. Uh, child tax benefits do not count as child support. Again, this would be a formal support from a non-custodial parent. OK, so after that one, you have your employment insurance. So only include employment insurance and Alberta Works funding if you're going to continue receiving them while you're in school. Uh, if you guys aren't sure, uh, you can check with your caseworker. So again, EI and Alberta Works only include it on the application if you will continue to receive it while you're in school. If you're not sure, just check with your, uh, your caseworker. And again, income for the severely handicapped, you have your H funding, so you can put the monthly amount you receive into there. And then uh, with that very last one, income from other sources. So this is very specific, guys. So what they're asking for here, again, you're not going to be entering your work amount or your savings amount anywhere on the application. So what the income from other uh, other sources is asking is basically if you have any business income, 
if you have any rental income from rental properties, uh, if you have any retirement income, anything like that. Uh, and again, guys, if none of these apply to you, you just put zeros into the uh, into the blank boxes there and move on. Yeah, so zeros into the blank boxes if it doesn't apply to you. And again, everything else is going to be monthly figures in here. So let's give it a couple minutes. Let everybody get this step finished. And if there is anything that you guys don't know on this application, if any figures you're not sure of, uh, keep in mind, guys, that the application does save for 28 days, up to 28 days on here. So if you're not sure about anything today, uh, again, after the session, you can reach out to us. Um, you can call us, you can email us, and then we can kind of help you get that all figured out as well. Or if you don't have some of the information today, that's fine because you can get it at a later date too. Saves for about 28 days there. So what we'll do now is once you guys have all this information entered in, the next step is the additional resource information. So non-registered investments. Again, this is for any investments you guys are holding outside of a tax sheltered account. So um, if, if you have like a high interest tax free savings account or RRSPs, anything like that, you don't need to enter that into here. It's only for um, any kind of investments you have outside of a registered account. So if you have like a interactive brokers account that's not under a registered account or or TD Thinkorswim, anything like that, Quest Trade account that's not under a TFSA, you enter that into there. Uh, for scholarships, bursaries, and fellowships, um, basically you only enter a scholarship amount into here if you've confirmed that you are going to receive it. Now, if you guys are getting any kind of entrance scholarships, do not enter it into the Technically, it's not confirmed yet. So again, with entrance scholarships, do not enter it into this box here. And then annual resources targeted to your education costs over here. This is basically for any money you're receiving from any, any family members besides your parents. So then you enter an amount into there and again, do not enter your work or your savings amounts anywhere into here, guys. And I think even if you guys click into the boxes, it should give you a little bit of information about what to enter as well. But if, again, if you guys are unsure, then just pop it into that uh, into the chat or into the Q&A there. So essentially, once you get to the end of this step, that should be the end of the financial information. So if you guys have any questions about it, again, pop it into the chat, then we'll try and answer it there. So give it a few minutes, just make sure that everybody gets um, gets those two sections done before we start on the personal information. So let's see, just pop in real quick. All right, so if everybody has those two sections down, let's get a quick thumbs up and then we can move on to personal information. I don't think I don't think everyone can do thumbs up even, but Okay. So it looks like there's not too many more questions uh, in that box and Sana and Marcella will keep answering you guys' questions there. So what we'll do is we'll walk through the personal information now. Um, we'll go through it slowly as well. So when you click start section, the very first section would just be pretty straightforward. Your last name, your first name, uh, marital status. Should all be pretty straightforward information here. So once you guys do enter all of that stuff in, you can click next, which would take you to the address and notification preferences. Give it a few minutes. OK, so then the next step here is the address and notification preference information. 
Um, so over here on the second page, it will prompt you for your notification preferences. So you are welcome to use either your McEwen email address or your personal email address. Um, just make sure that you guys use whichever one you're going to be checking more often. Uh, and then you guys will also have to click on verify email address to trigger an email with a confirmation link in it. Uh, and this step will need to be done before you guys can actually submit the application. So it shouldn't take too long. It's just put in your email there, click verify email address, and just click on that confirmation link. Should be a fairly quick step. And it has to be done before you guys can submit. So we'll give it a few minutes here real quick as well. And again, just use whichever email you guys are going to be checking more often here. Okay. So then when you get to the next step, which is the additional information, we're going to slow down a little bit there because those residency questions can be a little easy to mess up. So once you guys have done the verify email address step, we get to this one here. So with these residency questions, uh, we'll just take it a little bit slower step by step. So what that first question is asking, have you lived in Alberta all your life, is basically looking at uh, really just your high school there. So if you've attended high school in Alberta all your life. So if it's a no, um, is Alberta the last province you have lived in for 12 consecutive months without being a full-time post-secondary student? So over here, you guys can answer yes if you were attending school, uh, school on a part-time basis or if you were in high school. You can answer yes here. OK, so then once you walk through the other steps, like we mentioned in the uh, most commonly asked questions part uh, for the total income sections here. So again, with the income tax, like we mentioned earlier, if you are going to be expecting to make less in 2022 than you did in 2021, put your best guess as to what you'll make in all of 2022 into the expected reduced yearly income box. Uh, if you're going to be making the same amount of money or or even more money, just answer no and move on to the next step. Just leave that box blank. So again, if you expect to make significantly less in 2022, put your best guess as to what you'll make in that expected reduced yearly income. Then if it's going to be the same or more amount of money, then just leave it blank and move on. Okay, then the next step, once you guys click next, is uh, just the emergency contact information. Should be pretty straightforward. So this section here, pretty straightforward. Just put in your emergency contact info here. And then that should bring you guys to the end of the personal information over here. Yeah, so like Sana mentioned, after you guys do complete that personal information section, uh, what's going to happen is depending on um, the answers that you provided on the application, there might be a couple other sections that open up. So if you go back to the very beginning of the application where it shows your personal information, your study information, and your financial information, under that you should see some sections, for example, for your spousal, or your parental information, or if you answer that you have children, you'll see some um, some questions, some additional boxes pop up there. So just make sure that you guys answer those ones as well. So again, you might see a parental, spousal, or dependent children sections pop up for you guys. And if you do need help with any of that stuff, again, you can pop it into the uh, into the bo chat box there. Okay, let's give it a few minutes. So the next one I just want to really quickly touch on again, like we mentioned earlier, is the account 
www.alberta.ca slash login. So again, we briefly covered this already, guys, but uh, you may already have a My Alberta Digital ID account, as I know that some Alberta, uh, uh, some other Alberta services are linked to it. Um, so if you go into this link, uh, you can verify our account right now since we do have some time as well. Um, and again, guys, this has to be, if, if you decide not to do this today, that's fine. Uh, but just do remember that this has to be done before September start in September. So if you choose not to do it today, that's fine. But just remember that it should be done before you guys start school there in September. So then I'll have a quick slide just for some reminders uh, on things before you guys go, and then we'll have some time at the end to to answer any guys uh, any of your guys' questions that you might have and uh, get your guys' applications hopefully submitted there too. So I'll just quickly jump to the next slide here. So just some reminders of things before you guys go. So the Alexander Rutherford Scholarship is going to be available in early August, and you guys are going to go to studentaid.alberta.ca to apply for that. Uh, again, the Alexander Rutherford is basically for students who completed high school in Alberta. You guys might qualify for it. So again, if you feel that this is for you, it's again at studentaid.alberta.ca and available in early August. And then also students can opt out of some fees. So for example, if uh, you guys are covered under your parents or your employers for your health and dental fees, you guys can opt out of those fees by going to samu.ca. And I don't think you guys can do this until early August as well. So again, if you're covered uh, under your employer or parents for your health and dental, you can opt out of those fees. And I think you can even opt out of that my uh, the My Legal Planner fee as well. And then we also have the McEwen Scholarships Awards and Bursaries applications, which will open in September. And if you guys are here for the full year, we also have another awards application period that opens in January for winter. So again, beginning of September, beginning of January are important dates to keep in mind for uh, scholarships, awards and bursaries. Uh, and the main thing here is just to watch you guys' McEwen University email because what we'll do is once the applications are live, we will send you guys an email letting you know that you can go into your My Student Center and apply. Um, also, what we'll be hosting, it's not advertised yet, but for the week of September uh, 12th. So for that whole week, we'll have some times. We'll book a room, which will be right beside the office of the university registrar. So it's going to either be 7-138 or 7-139. So either one of those two rooms we're going to have booked for the whole week of September 12th. And basically what students can do, if you guys bring your laptops to us in that room, we can actually help you walk through that whole awards application there as well. So if you guys are kind of stuck and unsure of how to go through those sections, the bursary sections can be challenging too since they do ask for some financial information and bank statements. If you guys do have troubles with the awards application, again, that week of September 12th and 7138, or 7139, we will be helping students with their awards applications. Uh, we don't have it advertised yet or the dates or times yet, but um, but again, we will have that advertised once we finalize everything. So that's something to keep an eye out for as well. And then again, like that last step, like we mentioned in the previous slide, just make sure that you guys get your verified uh, My Alberta digital ID account before September. And then one thing that it's not on here, but I want to touch on really quickly again is everyone who's submitting applications today. Once you guys do submit your application, get to, to the very last step, hit submit. Keep an eye on your account because again, Alberta Student Aid will be sending you guys those loan agreements that you have to complete, right? And again, none of the money will move around until you guys complete those loan agreements. So once you hit submit, about Give it a couple of weeks and just keep an eye on your uh, on your inboxes for that loan agreement to come through. 